Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode from the series Fayar Studies of the Young Cellist. So the study that I just have played was study number 43, which is a study for arpeggios. This is a great study for the left hand, but it is even better for the right hand or to be more precise for bow distribution. So this is what we are going to check in today's lesson. This is going to be our main focus. Before we proceed into the lesson, a very important note. Many people are asking me if I can send them the PDF of the Fayar book by email and so on. Unfortunately, I don't have time to respond to everybody. So to make it easier for everyone, I put a link in the video description below with the book by Fayar. So where you can download it, print it out, open it and practice right away. And if you want to see more cello related content and free lessons just like this one, then consider to subscribe. All right, now let's see what my take is for this study, shall we? So as mentioned earlier, our main focus today will be the bow distribution. So let's start with this. Here with this study, it's very important that you have a very good bow distribution because if you don't have a good organized bow distribution, the music will be all over the place and you will encounter dirt between the bow connections and it will just sound empty and bad. This one is a very musical etude and by having a good bow distribution, this is going to help you in order to create beautiful musical lines. So let's break things down. Let's start first with the tempo markings. The tempo marking here is andante, so it's neither too fast, neither too slow. Andante comes from andare, which is a walking tempo more or less like that. Good. The next thing is it's written in three fourth or in other words, in three quarter notes. So one, two, three, one, two, three, more or less like this. The bow pattern here is two plus one, always two plus one, which means we have two beats when we play down bow and then we have one beat when you play up bow. So that would be like this one, two, three, one, two, three. So every time we play with a down bow, that means that the pace, so the speed of our bow must be a tiny bit slower. And when we play with the up bow, the pace goes more fluent. And this is the moment where we need to be careful because many of us have the tendency to play the a bow with accents. Let me show you. All right, here comes the question. How can we improve that? Of course, this comes with training, 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 training. But in order to play these patterns better, I highly recommend to focus on one note. You can choose the note. I would say I will choose uh, the F on the fourth position. So like this. Because if we play straight away with all the notes as it's written in the etude, it gets complicated and it's really difficult to focus on everything as we need to focus on left hand, right hand, shiftings and so on, string crossings. So that's why I prefer to do this on one single note. So you can pay full attention what is happening in your right hand. So that was my first tip. Now my second tip, which is also a very useful one. The second tip is to play the passages, the ones where you encounter most problems to play this with open string. Let's say that I have difficulty in the first two measures because of its string crossing. So instead of playing all the notes as it's written, I want to do open strings. A little bit complicated, so let me show it by myself. Mm -hmm. 
tricky to do. But again, by training this and doing this a couple of times, first slowly and then you speed up, you're gonna get this. All right, now my last step, and this is probably the most important one, and that is have a flexible arm, wrist, controlled, firm, but relaxed fingers. You can't get the ultimate sound with a stiff arm when you use the whole arm. As we encounter many strain crossings over here, the wrist is a very important tool. <laughs> You're probably wondering like, hey, help me out to have a flexible arm. Well, I wish, but I need to be honest with you. This is not done with a 10 minute YouTube video. Check this out with your teacher. But I do recommend to watch one of my other videos where I talk about the use of arm for a beautiful sound and so on. So you might want to check that out. The link is in the video description below and I go there pretty into detail. So that was it for today's lesson. This was the most important thing that I wanted to let you know in this study. It's not that much for arpeggios, it's more for the right arm. I hope you found it useful and that you will think about that when you are going to practice this study or any other pieces that are similar to this. The next video that will appear on the end screen is going to be a very interesting one. It is how comes that we have difficulties to play scales fast. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in that video. Bye bye.